What's up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I want to chat just quickly about CGC trading cards. So I'm going to try to keep this one short and just um, to give you like sort of an idea of what we're going to talk about. So we're going to start off a little bit negative I would say, but then we're going to veer into a more positive direction regarding CGC. So stick with me throughout the video and here we go. So first and foremost, the big news that I'm going to cover um, that's pretty current is that CGC recently increased pricing. So at the at the bulk and economy submission levels, I believe pricing stayed the same. However, however, from there, I believe it was like uniformly increased. The biggest issue that I take with it is the increase of um, subgrade prices. So it used to be, I think, nine or ten dollars to submit a card with subgrades, and now it's fifteen. The implication of that is that if you are making a bulk submission, that's fifteen dollars a card. Didn't change that price, but if you want to add subgrades, double that. It's thirty dollars a card. Now, a couple of reasons I kind of take an issue, I kind of take issue with that is like, one, look at where we're at in the world. The macroeconomic state is extremely unstable. A lot of people are struggling. Here in the Midwest, gas prices are approaching $5 a gallon. And I know on the West Coast and other high densely populated areas, it's even worse already. So just a really tough time to be raising prices. Um, from a business standpoint, I've got a couple of theories on why they could be doing this. One, um, you know, as their competitors are beginning to open lower submission tiers, maybe CGC is trying to stay in front of it and kind of establish a market floor for grading prices. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a moment, but the more likely scenario I believe is that CGC probably hired a bunch of people, which is why we saw turnaround times take such a nosedive, which is great. But, you know, if you hire too many people too quickly, obviously things can become pretty volatile. Um, so the case may be right now that perhaps they're just trying to keep up with payroll. Um, so one questionable decision has now led to another. And, you know, it's awesome that CGC is just increasing prices to try to keep these individuals employed because they deserve to take care of their families financially. But is it going to end well for CGC? Uh, that is kind of undecided. So... Here's where kind of the competitor idea comes into play. So PSA and BGS are actively in opening up the floodgates to lower submission tiers, lower prices. Regarding PSA specifically, because I don't follow BGS at all, PSA has historically opened up their submission tiers in either like 30% increments or sometimes like just reducing the price in half. So based on that, right now, the lowest submission is $50 per card. Given the information I just let on, um, we can kind of infer that the next the next tier might be like 30, 30 to $25, hopefully, which would be about the same price as a bulk submission with subgrade through CGC. Now, from a collector standpoint, I would take the PSA card, unfortunately, 10 times out of 10 in this situation, I think, uh, maybe nine times out of 10, I'll give that because like even though as a collector i plan on keeping my cards someday i might have to turn these cards around and so i want them to retain as much value as possible historically we've seen psa does tend to retain a lot more value even in some cases compared to like a perfect 10 from cgc which is you know whatever but from a seller standpoint it's kind of a no-brainer you know you want your inventory to retain as much value as possible so that you can achieve profit that would be psa so you know, the one out of 10 opportunity that I would probably grade with CGC is like my world's promos, for example, those are all graded so far in CGC slabs. So just for uniformity, I might pick CGC. And I'll say I do, re I like CGC as a company. I think that they've made a lot of good decisions for the hobby, despite some of the noise and rumblings that are out there regarding them. I think that they've been very transparent for a large corporation and, you know, overall, I support CGC. I disagree with this decision to increase prices. I don't think it makes sense. I think that as PSA opens lower tiers, they're going to hit thir close to $30 a card. And if CGC and PSA cards are priced the same for submission, people will choose PSA. It's just a fact. It makes sense logistically. So I did mention in the beginning that we were going to take a more optimistic turn. And here's that. So I've been doing some reflecting overall, and I really think that 
some indefinite amount of time in the future, we're all going to look back on this 2020 to 2022 time frame. And I think that we're all going to be pretty thankful that CGC came around when it did. CGC entered the market of trading card, grading trading cards, in a time where there's a huge influx of demand and a huge I cut off of supply, I guess is the right terminology. Um, you know, at the time, at the probably the most like demand heavy period in Pokemon trading card history, PSA, the primary card grader for this market closed or shut down or started increasing their prices and then shutting down, what have you. So however you want to frame that. But basically like the the spearhead of the graded card market closed their gates to submissions. And we saw prices on graded cards continue to climb, um, both because of the increased demand as well as the now lack of supply. What's out there is out there. And even the submissions that we were able to squeak in, well, some of us are looking at like a year and a half turnaround time still from PSA, so that stinks. Meanwhile, CGC enters the scene and they, they opened up at pretty fair prices for grading, you know, their turnaround times have never been extraordinary, extraordinarily fast, maybe right in the beginning and like right now they're pretty quick, but overall they haven't been fast, but they've been fair. So CGC has been a pretty reliable option for submitters, you know, in a time where otherwise you weren't able to grade your cards, you could with CGC. Um, from a consumer standpoint, you know, you had the option of buying PSA cards, but those might be massive percentiles more expensive when compared to a CGC card. So if you want to get into grading cards, CGC allowed you a lower barrier to entry in terms of the collectible market of graded cards. You could get them for cheaper as a consumer. And I think that that matters. So overall, I think that in the future, we may look back favorably upon this period of time and CGC entering the market when it did, because it may very well have like pushed for the longevity or sustainability long-term of the grading card graded card portion of this hobby so just something to think about and i'm open to hear your guys's thoughts and opinions down below um thank you very much again for watching this video we're filming another one in the gym gym parking lot so this might be like a little mini series or something like that but again as always i really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video um and i hope to see you next time